All right, guys. Nissan Maxima, second gen swap. For those who are having cam issues, um, getting the cam code, all that, um, check your trigger wheels first. Um, I made the mistake, it's very easy to do, done it on two different cars. Um, got a hold of Darren, he helped me figure it out, told me what I need to look for. Um, if you actually pay attention to what's on his website, it actually tells you how to place the trigger wheel. So just a uh, overlook on my side, kind of screwed it up. Um, it just basically makes the front cam not work, gives you cam codes, all that type of business. Um, you know, if you plug the cam in, the cam sensor in, the car won't start on it because it's not getting the correct information to PCM. If you look right here, this is the trigger wheel from Niz Formance with the dowel already done. Um, you got two slots. Um, we got this slot over here and then we got this slot over here and this is the OEM slot This is what you're supposed to put it back to factory um, So I just messed up and I put it on that one just to, it, it's just because the cameras rotated or whatever the case may be just the luck of the draw um, It's a 50 50 shot. So check that out first before you go pulling timing and all that Now there's another way you can check it with the cam sensor hooked up um, You need to see the values that are coming across um, you know if one's really far out like let's just say 127 and 60 you just follow the bank it'll tell you which one you got misaligned um, pull the valve cover off pull the cross brace that goes over this um, take a look make sure but all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen the trigger wheel and move the dowel pin to the second location um, that should be the OEM uh, factory spec Apparently it's a very big issue, a lot of people are missing them, um, you know, very easy to do, but now at least you can see what we're looking at, um, just pull it apart, make sure everything's good on that department. If your cam trigger wheel is in the right location, make sure that you have no issues with the cam wiring and all that, um, make sure they plugged in all the way because, you know, faulty connection can cause this too. If that's not the case, you know, you want to make sure everything looks good and then you may have to suspect timing. That'll be a video for another day. This is just how to fix this department. Um, Nelson's Maxima, we swapped his, had the same problem. Um, we've already fixed his, his is working, fires first go, no issues. Now I'm gonna fix mine. It's just taken me a lot longer to get to mine just because I'm still running full shop. Um, and then trying to do modifications on the weekend so my car kind of got put on the back burner um, I mean I haven't even relocated the battery yet still trying to get everything figured out um, but you know hopefully here you know, as time goes on I can get mine more dialed in more figured out you know just get everything put back together the way it should get it running tip top and uh, you know, I mean, I still have parts off my car that I haven't even put on since it was painted. Um, you know, we're looking at the windshield, still don't even have the side skirts on. I mean, I've been driving it, but you know, it hasn't been that much of an issue to me. Spoiler's not on, you know, the back deck lid pieces are not on. Um, don't have mud flaps on yet. You know, I still gotta do all that stuff, but you know, it is a work in progress and everybody needs their cars more than I need mine so we're just trying to make it all work um, and then Nelson drives his daily so he's was more of a priority to get fixed um, you know you can see that a lot better there now the dial pins in the first one we're just gonna move it over make sure everything's good um, and then the true testament will be when you start it um, it should fire right up make sure you clear the codes and everything like that um, you know and then go from there so we'll catch you on the next one. Chris will be posting all these videos. That way y'all can see what's going on. Um, hopefully this helps. Thanks. All right, everybody. Here we go. We got the cam trigger wheel taken care of. Um, got the valve cover back together. Got everything hooked back up. Um, still gonna put my catch can and stuff on there. The 
I just stuck this here for right now just to make sure that everything worked. It does. Um, it's a very simple black is black. If you don't know how to hook them up, black is black. Um, the green and red wire that goes to just the red is the cam 12 volt power. And then this is the orange one and the red on this side is your signal voltage. So um, preferably, you know, type them up, tape them up nice, um, get them up out of the way, maybe use a little heat shrink and things like that. And, or if you can get the conduit in this stuff. I just picked this up at Lowe's. Um, you know, pretty much most of the harness that has been modified or cut is running this. Now, I've got the mass airflow sensor here. Um, that's just like that because we were messing with a couple things. Yes, there's a zip tie holding it in, but that's just temporary, just so that I could keep it in there. I got the screws, everything at the shop. Um, the intake tube, it's sitting a little funny just because the battery's in its in this spot because I deleted the battery tray, got rid of all this. This is just so that I can start the car. Um, the battery will be going to the trunk once that moves, the intake will move. It's gonna move pretty much all the way this way. You can see it's a little off angle, but that's just so that I can start the car and move it and do what I need to do. But that was a little sidetracked. Um, but yeah, once this is on, I'm gonna show you what it does when it doesn't start, and then I'm gonna show you what it does when it starts. Cool. Okay. Imagine in a perfect world, everything's fixed now. You've got the cam trigger wheel in the right place. You've got the wiring hooked up to the cam inverter the way it's supposed to be. Everything works. You're still going to have a code for the cam sensor, whatever bank is related to your issue. So see they're still there. Just go in, clear them out. Yep, clear codes, all is gone. Yep, successfully. Okay, so now with that being said, the car should fire up pretty much. First go with no issues. See, there was no prolonged cranking. Everything seemed to do its job and check engine lights gone. I don't mind the washer fluid. Yeah, I still got, I don't have washer fluid in it. But, you know, in theory that should all work. Now both banks are doing what they're supposed to do, reading correctly, and then talking to the computer, and then everything is happy, you know? So check all your bases first. Um, now, when Nelson and I's car got put back together, we just overlooked it just because we missed something. Don't know why, no real excuse. I guess it's a big problem with everybody, um, but we just overlooked it. Darren already has that information. If you don't know where to find that, that's Niz Formans. Look it up. He has all the specs, all the how-tos, everything explains how to put the trigger wheel in. And you know, you want to use the factory notch for the cam. You don't want to put it on the other side. Just use the factory notch, and you should be fine. Put the trigger wheel on wire in your wires correctly he has the diagrams for those two um you know get that all wired up and everything should work out just fine and it's all just dependent on the corresponding bank um you know if we'd have gone through this process and the trigger wheel wasn't the problem and the wiring wasn't the problem and the computer wasn't the problem then at the end of the day it's timing you know your timing chains out a little bit will affect it I mean you can't go too much because otherwise you would have running issues even if you did get the car to run you would have you know misfires or very very bad hesitation on acceleration and stuff like that just because that means the chains are not in the right place and they're just causing issues um, you know and especially you know anybody will tell you if you put chains on them you know always rotate the engine over a couple of times if something's out of time or something's gonna bind you know if it's that bad out of time you're gonna run into something these these are interference motors you know if that chain jumps it will eat itself so if you rotate it over by hand and you feel like it bites tight and something's in the way 
stop, put it back the way you had it, and check the timing, make sure everything looks good. Um, and take it from there, and hopefully everything will work out just for you.